the sun. Very strong today. Tortoise is taking it in. Toby over here doing his beached whale thing that Toby's do. It's a beautiful day. It's warming up. It's been kind of an odd chilly August and I'm gonna try and do some things. It's probably gonna be a lot like last week. Just lots of little randomy things here. And then if I ever get my car back from the shop, might go buy that palm tree that I'm sure people are gonna say, why would you get it? You don't need it. You know what? I, I've been at it with the plants for many years. I'm sure those of you who've been gardening for a long time, you understand when I say, you don't get that excited about plants all that often anymore because it's just kind of like you've seen it. And this is a beautiful plant and I really want to get it. I hope they still have it. They may not, I don't know. Anyways, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. The neighbor's hedge trimmer has been going for like an hour. So I was like, eh, just gonna get going today. With what? I don't know. We will find out. Maybe when Colby's done warming up, he'll go eat his lettuce and we can have a tortoise mukbang. That might be fun. Mukbang? 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 Whatever. I need to bring the iguana back outside. The iguana's been inside. So hence me needing to bring it outside. It's been kind of chilly. So, as I mentioned before, that's why it was inside. I want to kind of clear out a spot for that enclosure that just makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to do some rearranging over here and I don't think I'm going to be able to make the cage like look nice out here, but I can make it fit in better. Also, I'm going to, you know, I did the intro thing with the noise in the background, but I don't want to go on for too long with that. So, I don't know, let's rearrange some stuff. Toby, are you going to help? I didn't think so. So what do we have over here? There is a Heliconia. This is a Heliconia hirsuta, which is one of my favorites. It has a tiny little bract getting ready to do its thing. The Heliconias this summer just haven't done much. It hasn't been terribly warm. It was for a little while, but that was kind of brief. I do think I want to repot this though, so I'm going to take this back over to my repotting area, which I'm going to be cleaning up this week because, oh wow, just <laughs> hit my head on there. I think I'm going to get through the bulk of my repotting within a couple days, so I'll be able to get all this stuff put away finally. Have a Hedicium. This is a ginger. It's a small variety. It was in a haul back in June. And it's just a fun little butterfly ginger that stays smaller. I have a whole bunch of New Guinea patients back here also that I never even got around to planting those. So I should do something with them. Maybe those would go well around that hydrangea tree that I moved last week. That might be a good option for those. And then just cleaning and tidying. There are some annuals that died down there from being overwatered by the helpers. They did their best. They tried. It's okay. And then the foxtail. Where am I going to... What am I gonna do with you? Usually the foxtail goes where that queen palm is on the other side of the tiki bar, but that's not going to work. I could probably fit the enclosure right in here anyways, but it needs to be a sunny spot, at least for part of the day. Uh, ah, I'm gonna play around with it. Take these New Guinea impatience down here to the hydrangea trees. Uh, really, it's just the one hydrangea tree. I'm not going to pot up the other one because it's just, eh. Next year, I'll make sure they match this year. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> there goes the hedge trimmer again. I also have a whole bunch of orchids down here that uh, I don't really know where they fell out of. You know you have a lot of plants when you just have like orchids falling out of the sky. We had some bed storms a few weeks ago and I'm pretty sure I had these up here with my other orchids. So I'm going to get these cleaned up and I'll pot some. I might mount some. These actually have a lot of potential for having some fun with them, so I might move these to the shade table for now. Oh, look at these two. I say look at these two as if they're having like a moment. It's more likely that Toby has no idea that the tortoise is there. <laughs> if he did, he probably would get up and move because sometimes the tortoise tries and walks on top of him. I'm just taking a quick break. Very quick break because I was just a bit, I had to do some watering because it's getting hot. Look what's going on over here. Do you see this? Does it show on camera? This fun geyser of water coming out from my drip irrigation. See, this is why it's always good. Make sure you have goof plugs on hands because sometimes, sometimes things just don't work out the way that they are supposed to. So there's clearly something went wrong in the drip line back there and um, one of the hoses came undone. I'll let that finish doing its thing and I'll fix it. It's just kind of funny because what I missed recording was that like maybe 10 minutes ago one of the sprinkler heads down here broke and there's just a geyser of water 
shooting up in the sky and uh, I ended up being like you know what I'm okay with it because the way it was shooting it watered everything over here for me so I don't have to water down here so I might just be okay with this broken sprinkler head down here maybe you know if it's broke just uh, say screw it let it be broken it's working out okay in other sprinkler head news I had no idea that I had a sprinkler head here you see that straight ahead no clue had no idea that was there Never noticed that before in my life. I always wondered why moss grew so incredibly well on the steps over here. Now I know. All these years, I have never noticed water coming over the edges here or on the rocks. Good to know. You can see a lot of good it's doing for everything up here. I haven't planted this area. I have a whole thing I want to do over here someday. But that's, you know, for someday. When I said just a minute ago that I was taking a break to water, I mean like an hour and a half long break. It's getting hot, which is great because... You know, I wasn't really able to be out here and play in the heat this summer and still like kind of not really supposed to, but I can get in there to cool off and I can only walk around, but that's still better than nothing. It's all good stuff, so I'm okay with it. It's gonna be like 94 and just like a classic summer day. I'm not gonna have to run inside and hide from the heat like I usually do. I still need to hang out in my little fan world over there if I, you know, get overheated, but really I think anybody should do that. Gotta avoid heat exhaustion and just trying to stay out of the sun in general because of you know sun damage here's what i've gotten done though there's broom over here did some sweeping and stuff like that i got the heliconia not just repotted that's from a labrador tail see that that dog tail it does some damage i ended up dividing that heliconia into three separate pots it just made more sense that way when i had the root ball out it was like already ready to crumble into three pieces so i was like yeah okay I'll go with it. That works out fine. Got things pushed back a little bit here. Did some sweeping. A lot of cleaning and tidying down there. So this area is working out okay. And I'm just working my way down the line of just cleaning and tidying and trying to get things put back together. I do think once I'm done with this area, there's a lot. Like there's some pots on the ground because this has been my video area over here because it's in the shade with the umbrellas and the fans and all that fun stuff but there's just clutter kind of around the area not a lot a little bit shouldn't be hard to pick up but when i'm done with that i'm going to come in and work on some pruning because the elephant ears they have a lot of foliage that's fallen down that needs to be cleaned up and uh, i I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them in these pots but it, i kind of want to take them out i think next year what i'll probably end up doing I'll talk about this will be talked about in the garden tour so we don't need to talk about it right now but essentially I think that I'll probably still use these colocasias I really like them and just put the bird of paradise somewhere else so that these can be more towards the back I think that'll work better and then I can have flowers planted in the front because this is this is ridiculous I think it's beautiful but it doesn't make sense Ah, I think that that fits in right there just fine I've got my broom over here there was spilled soil and mud and stuff all over the place from pulling the plants out that were over here. I'll probably move this lotus over here and do a little bit more rearranging, but I need to make sure that I maintain my path. There's just like a little tiny path in here. Can you see it? Kind of. There's a gap in there that I need to be able to get into to walk around to get to the plants that are up here on this hill up on the trellis. All the bromeliads, the pothos, the orchids, and philodendrons, all those things. Those I need to be able to get to. The iguana seems happy to be back outside to see it you know they like the heat and it's supposed to be pretty darn toasty here tomorrow i'm actually going to wrap things up today because i have a bunch of other things i need to get done that have nothing to do with the youtube but i think this fits in really well here I mean, it doesn't look great but it's fine it'll do it's better than having it sitting over here it was kind of like in the middle of the patio that wasn't really working for me it was nice and cool when i started but the camera keeps overheating so i'm gonna wrap this up pick back up tomorrow and talk about the rest of what i did over here maybe we'll go inside and get some veggies cut for the iguana see what pumpkin's up to toby have you seen the tortoise where's colby hiding you seen colby where's colby Where's the tortoise? Go find the tortoise, Toby. Where's the tortoise? Go find the tortoise. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I just, he's hiding. Pumpkin, what about you? You seen him anywhere? It's warm enough. Needs to go outside. Pumpkin, say hi. Yeah, oh, you distracted. She's distracted by the camera string. Well, I tried.
But right now, the tortoise is sleeping underneath the birdcage. I can't get him out from under there. So he'll just have to wait to eat. That's okay. I can't, it's the, underneath the birdcage, the opening's like this high. I don't even know how the tortoise fits under there, but somehow he sure does. So this is just some sliced up sweet peppers. It seems to be the iguana's like treat of choice. I have a little bit of vitamin on there. This is a calcium D3 powder. It's important that they get that. And then this, I already put some of this on there. This is crushed up um, acidophilus, which is just a probiotic. Help them digest. They are hindgut fermentators, fermenters, hindgut fermenters. And uh, baby iguanas don't always have the necessary bacteria to digest properly. It's gross, but in the wild, they would like chomp down on the feces of the adults to get those probiotics but can't do that in captivity there's debate as to whether or not they really need the probiotic but it's not going to hurt anything to give it to them once a week so i say do it for the first year just to be safe hey you i'm here yeah i'm here i know you hate my guts it's all right i still love you it's an iguana not a cat, not a dog. I don't expect love and affection out of it. But over time, some patience should tame down some. What's the problem here? You know, the only disadvantage of having Jerry rigged this cage is that it just, it's not perfect. Oh, look at that. It's time for me to swap out your hibiscus too. You went ahead and went to town on that thing, didn't you? It's gonna take some of these, some of the peppers with the vitamins, and then this seems to be where she likes to go to eat. Oh, were you gonna get me? You don't usually do that. That's very bold of you. Latch that up and save those. Give her some more in a few days. And I think I need to swap out this hibiscus. That doesn't look too appetizing to me. I don't think if I were to go on, I'd want to eat much more of that. Wow. Look at you. You're a good little gardener. Good job chomping that thing down. Doesn't need any pruning. You took care of that all on your own. Just go ahead and pull that out. Swap it out with another one. This is why I have so many hibiscus, because I rotate them through. So every couple weeks, I take the old hibiscus out, and I bring it back over here, and put it back into rotation with the other hibiscus, which are these two. There's one here, there's another one over there, and I have a few more on the other side of the patio, and I just swap them out. As you can see, it only takes them a few weeks to go ahead and flush back out with fresh growth. So it's like as terrible as that looks, it'll be good in a couple weeks. And then I can rotate it back out again. And the really nice thing about it is just the hibiscus, they're pretty affordable and they're really easy to take care of. So it makes the whole process very easy. There you go. So it's a simple process and keeps them pruned back for me. You're still hiding. You don't have to do that. I'm never gonna hurt you. I only wanna take care of you. Someday you're gonna put those things together. Or maybe not, it is an iguana. Like I said, it's not a dog, not a cat. I have little expectations. And this is nice because there's a constant food source in there. Same thing with the pothos. She'll eat the pothos or he, I don't know, haven't sexed the iguana. And then I still make sure to give fresh fruits and veggies throughout the week with different vitamins and supplements as you just saw to help keep that diet varied and rich. If you're wondering about the reason this is so janky, it's basically because I don't want to spend the money on an iguana cage. They're hundreds of dollars and a little bit smaller than this. This is like $80 off of Amazon and I went ahead and just put some vinyl screening in there. She was getting some nose rub because she would freak out whenever people were around, which people were around her a lot. And after a few months, she still just wasn't taming down. So this material, it's nice and soft. And the nose rub, which is just basically, I mean, it's what it sounds like. The front of their nose starts to get kind of scarred up and bruised. That's completely resolved at this point. Oh, and I did that wrapping because it's still small enough to get through those bars. But this is, it's doing the trick for now. It has wheels on it. So when we have cold nights, which we don't usually have during the summer, but this year has been unique, then I can pull it back into the garage and then bring it back out. And this is temporary. Iguanas need gigantic, humongous enclosures. But for right now, this is a pretty big enclosure for the size of this iguana. I would like for it to be bigger, but this will have to do. And I. The plan was to build something out of two by fours and screening, maybe put like a bamboo facet or something on it. And I was gonna put it kind of down over there underneath that light, but then, you know, the whole, all this stuff happened. So I was just more focused on having an enclosure to bring the iguana outside in. So it was like a week, maybe two before my surgery, I went ahead and I just ordered this and very slowly 
rigged something up with zip ties and eventually I got tired of using zip ties and I just took wire and sewed this through because there are big gaps in there where things were kind of loose. Like I said, it was 80 bucks. So I don't expect this to last very long, but it works for now. I know I hadn't talked about this very much, so there's, there's the rundown on the iguana and the <laughs> really ugly cage. But it works, it's functional, lots of room, lots of climbing space. Ideally, you'll be able to get this iguana tamed up sooner than later, and um, she'd have even more free range. I wouldn't let her go free range, but could have her out, especially in the wintertime in the growth space. I think that would be nice. She might eat all the plants, but that's okay. I mean, it's cute. You go ahead and eat the plants. It's fine. And another big part of what I've been doing has been repotting. I showed you those heliconias that I just divided up and repotted. This is in Akuba. It's an interesting variety. What's the variety? Where's the tag? Picturata Akuba. You can see. Maybe you can see. Let me get in closer. Picturata Akuba. See that? Has a different variegation than just the Mr. Goldstrike. Now, these have been getting a little bit too much sun. So you can see by these blackened tips. I went ahead and I pulled that from its nursery container and put it into a ceramic planter because that's going to provide better winter protection for it, which is something I have to keep in mind because they didn't make it into the ground this year and they're only marginally hardy here. They're solid for zone seven and up. I'm in zone six, so have to be very careful with them. It's going to do better in a pot that's not plastic. The others, all the others that I have, you can see I have this whole row of them over here. Those are all Mr. Gold Strikes and they're a little bit more hardy, but still I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them just to be safe. Lots and lots and lots of repotting. So like how I just said it was getting too much sun and then I just set it back down in the sun. I'll move it. I need to move it and water it. Oh, well, I've bounced from trying to get some things done over here. I realized that before I can do that, I have to make sure that all the things over here that need to be moved can be moved. I have this whole area over here by the hot tub and they just need to move the pots around, do some repotting, get it cleared up. So I can move some of these plants, some things that need to be moved. They can go over there and then have some things from over there. It's a little rearranging thing. It's kind of fun. I, I sort of enjoy it. I've been making a decent amount of progress here. The foot planter. I didn't plant this up this year. These are just petunias that showed up. They must have reseeded from last year. I have done nothing with this. It's just been sitting here. This extension cord's been running because the electric's been funny this year. And there's one little sea oat in here, which uh, must have reseeded from this fall plant I did last year. That's kind of fun. I didn't put it there. I didn't do anything with this. It's just happened. I have these osteospermums I picked up in the springtime and I've had them over here in the shade because when it gets really hot and rainy, they tend to not do as well for me. So this, I know this doesn't look like shade. It's shady most of the day. I think it's time to go ahead and give these a heavy cutback. Where are my pruners? Colby, you see my pruners anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. My bad. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a very, very heavy cutback. So I want them to fill back out and bush out because these are going to start to do their thing again when the weather starts to cool off here in about, I don't know, four or five weeks or so. And now that these are cut back, they're going to come hang out over here with some pansies and the other cool season plants just for a few weeks, get them back on their feet. They're in line of the drip and it's nice and dappled over here. The sun that is, is nice and dappled. So that should help bring them back to life and hopefully it'll get a fresh set of blooms on these come, I don't know, maybe late September, early October. I'm a little behind on this. Probably should have done this about two or three weeks ago. <sighs> My clam. I didn't plant this up this year. Just didn't have time for it. I have tons of these clamshell planters. I'm thinking I might still plant this up, but I'll probably do it with hardy succulents and sedums. I think that that would make the most sense. There's just no reason to invest money in things that are just gonna die in a little while. And I don't have anywhere to put this in my house. Yeah, I don't know how easy it is to tell, but this is, it's quite large. This, there's, I don't have the space for it in the house. So something hardy, some sedums, hens and chicks, stuff like that, that'll do. I do need to move this somewhere though, cause it is in the way of a lot of things. Yes, this is much better. When I just put the clamshell down on the wall where the new arborvitae is, that that's a good spot for it for right now. My newer bonsai is over here. It's not the best spot for them. Have some fronds up over here on this areca palm that need to go. They have aged out, they're done, and they are really getting in the way of some other things. For right now, that's the only one I plan on doing anything with just because I need to, I just need it out of the way because I need to scoot this stuff over. Always things in the way. So the hot tub that's back here is just like everything else around here. It is 
broken. There's a leak in there. So that's why it's pulled out from the wall. Normally I wouldn't just have plants covering this entire wall because you need access to the hut, but it doesn't it didn't work, so it doesn't matter. Problem with that is during the process of trying to fix that hot tub, all kinds of things were just getting pulled up and set up here on the wall like this, this. That's trash. That doesn't need to be over there. There's this is a useless net. See that? That's not gonna do any good. So this way I've at least opened up some space so I can rearrange some things. I don't think I can move this fall planter over though. I don't think it's going to get enough sun. I mean, these are all sun lovers, so I don't think they would enjoy being pushed over there. That might be a good spot for a ginger though. I could put a ginger there. Like you, this will do. Like this one, this will do just fine. This isn't potted in here, I just, it was a perfect fit. So I just set it down in there, works okay. That way I don't have to mess with digging the Worms out and storing them during the winter time. That's okay. I don't mind that little pop of color back there in the shade. This ultimately probably needs to get, just get moved somewhere else completely. I just don't really know where. I set that in exactly the wrong spot. <laughs> right where no one can see it. Didn't think that one through. This is actually kind of an okay location for this for right now just because these are all dry loving plants that I put in here. The ivy you know can kind of go either way. I do think I am going to pull that out though and replace it with a sedum, uh, a perennial variety of sedum. That will make that more of a, <laughs> sorry, this is almost tripped over the tortoise here. That'll make this a little bit more of a no fuss kind of planter with the exception of those sea oats that are in there, the northern sea oats, they like some more water. I could swap that out with something else too if I wanted, but for right now, I just need it out of the way. It was in my way. So it's better over here right now. When it comes to fall planters, I do a few of them every year, but they mostly end up on my front porch. I don't really like to look at them that much. I enjoy fall a little bit, but I also like resent it. Just because it means it's time to shut things down and get things in the house. It's more of like a busy time of year. Like anybody, remember school, how like fall's great, but you also start to associate it with midterms and things like that. That's kind of like something that's still lays deep in my soul because I have to, you know, there's a lot, it gets pretty busy here in the fall time. Look at this, so much room for activities. I can put so many things up here, this is perfect. And this heliconia, that poor heliconia. I think it's time to repot that as well and I can do something with this bromeliad. That's like I've been doing this whole time, just trying to fix up this entire area. <laughs> also, I can move things from over here, over here, just a few of them. Just makes sense that way. I wanna get a better layout. And I'd like to be able to see the front of the planter that this areca palm is in, just cause it's a beautiful planter, but you can't even see it. And uh, I just have to jump back to this because I have two camera batteries and uh, one's dead. And the one that I just put in here apparently didn't charge. I have like 8% left. So just gonna go plug my camera and charge it that way. And then hopefully by the time I have working batteries, things will be looking better over here. I think it already looks quite a bit better, but it's still not not quite acceptable. No, it's still very messy. Hey, okay. Five hours later, two full batteries. I got a little bit more done. Not a ton, a little bit. The heat of the day kicked in and I was like, eh, screw it, I'm going inside, too hot. But as I've been going through my pottery and like trying to get it organized, I went ahead and I put all my clamshells and like my overflow things kind of down over here in this area. So they're not just like spread out all over the patio anymore. They're out of sight finally. But I still have some pots that I want to do some things with, particularly this one. Did I just say particularly? This one. I really like this pot. It has this great scalloped shape to it, these fun ridges and everything. And I really, really like the color. And I have all of these Akubas. I have tons of them. And I think that that would be a perfect thing to put in a pot like this. It's still August, but I am thinking forward <laughs> to winter and fall already just because, well, I've basically missed all the summer planting things. So I want at least to be able to enjoy doing some planting and some things that will have some longevity. Yeah, I think that'll look really nice in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to, oh shoot, look at those roots. I might need to save this for a bonsai. You know what though? I don't have to bonsai everything that has neat roots. I think that'll look really nice in there. Oh, look at that. Drastic transformation. Not so much. I, uh, yeah, this is ugh. getting later in the day. I need to do something with this heliconia because it looks like garbage. It's not doing well in the nursery pot that it came in. And then, oh, what was that? I thought I heard you in the pool tuck. What are these noises you're making? What are these noises? I have a water bowl out here for you. There's not that much salt in the water, so it's not like bad for him, but I would prefer you drink the fresh water that I have 
you know what can you do he's having a good time it's okay so yeah need to finish this area finish that area over there and still have this to fix up the thing i'm trying to figure out here is that like i had mentioned in the past i would try to not put too many plants up on this wall because that would block access to that hot tub however i also told you hot tub doesn't work i mean still need access but not like a ton basically I just need to be able to get through here and over this wall so do i fill it up with plants I'm thinking maybe just because why not I have these vincas here that I was going to have planted in the front of the areca palm but I didn't get around to it before everything went downhill with the health situation and at this point I don't really see a reason to tear them up and put them down the front of this pot because it takes them like a month to recover from that before they start growing and a month from now it's going to be late September so it's just doesn't really make sense. So I need to figure out something else to do with this vinca right here. And I have another one right here that looks a little bit worse because I actually started to divide it up like a month ago to try and do this planters. And it was just, I couldn't do it. Uh, it was too much with the shoulder situation and everything. So I'm gonna figure out what to do with those. The heliconia looks awful. Whatever potting media, the person who grew this had this in, it's awful. So that needs to get fixed like that's probably top priority i might bump it up into this ripple pot right here i don't know see the issue with heliconias is they tend to not really do much of anything until they've started to fill out their pot so if i bump it up a pot size it's pretty much just gonna sit still for like six to eight weeks and then six to eight weeks that there's not gonna be anything to look at because it's gonna be time to move these things in but if i leave it like this it's just going to die so okay yeah i'll bump it up you're right you talked me into it that's what i'll do i'll bump it up into the bigger pot if it were earlier in the season then i would go ahead and divide this up because you can see i could easily get probably i'd say at least three clumps out of this plant but it's just there's no point this time of year so i think just bumping it up a pot size giving it some TLC. The main thing is I want it to be really healthy when it becomes time to go ahead and cut it back and divide it up to store it for winter. I'm not going to try and keep this one growing during the winter time because when I was looking at the roots in there, they looked like there may have been a little bit of rot. I cut some of it out. And again, if it were earlier in the year, I would have just completely dismantled its root system and done all kinds of things. But instead, I'm just going to clean it up, give it this fresh soil, and then um, probably a systemic fungicide just to be safe and try and get it healthy. Cause you can see like this poor thing, see those leaves. They should be green all the way through. This isn't variegated. That's chlorosis. This has got all kinds of deficiencies going on with it. I did shake out as much of the original soil around it as I could without disturbing the roots too much, but there's still a decent amount in there. But it's only gonna be for like a month and then I'll be lifting it and cutting it back and just going, I'm just going to store the rhizomes this year. I'll replant them in late winter to get them going again. But this is just a case of a plant that really needs some TLC before I would take the leap to go ahead and dismantle it. It doesn't have any time to recover. Oops, yeah, I take the lens cap off. So not perfect, but a step in the right direction. Got a lot of things rearranged over here. That heliconia you saw it got repotted. I moved some gingers where they'll get a little bit more light, help them with blooming. I moved the big variegated ginger around the corner. I have my filming table over here to clean it off so I can just get all that sand and everything off uh, off the patio. I don't want it all over the place. I want to get that sand and whatnot over into the drains. And I moved the uh, Mayan palm, the Hooperiana. And then I had this whole area over here that's just been a disaster the filming areas but i've only just gotten started with cleaning all of this up but here's what i got done so step in the right direction sun's going down <laughs> i'm sweating ready for a shower so pick back up in the morning and hopefully finish things up over here because i only have 20 minutes left on this memory card which means that this is a very long vlog because I had a good amount of memory on there. Uh, but that's okay, you know, long vlog, it's mindless, no point to it, it's easy to watch, so it doesn't really matter how long it is, right? I'm, I'm satisfied with today's amount of work, wish I'd gotten more done, but spent a couple hours watering this morning and then have to go when it gets really hot, because still have to minimize the sweating. Eh, 
not too bad. I'm really looking forward to getting this cord. I have someone who's going to help me get that fed through and underneath and like around everything so it won't be on the patio anymore and then getting things power washed and cleaned up and again, not done. I need, that's enough. I'm gonna go to bed. I'll be back in just a minute. Good morning, Tuck. Funkin', where you going? Wanna go outdoors? It's a nice day. It's a beautiful day. Let's go outside. Now I just have to try and remember where did I leave off? I don't know. I really don't remember. I know last night I moved the Hooperiana, which is the Maya palm that was back here in this corner behind those orchids that are hanging there. You just you couldn't see it anymore. So there's no reason for it to be there. That plus the angle of the sun has finally shifted to a place where I can move my Monstera over here. So I wanted to clear that spot out anyways. So that Hoopriana, the Maya Palm. There we go. So the Hoopriana, the Maya Palm, that's down here now. I can see I missed a few fronds while cleaning it up yesterday. But it's looking pretty good. It has a whole bunch of old sheaths on here that I could probably pull off and remove. Yeah, I need to pull off and remove. See that? That's not good stuff. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this palm moved. It was like back where there's no airflow. It was very dark and I was concerned about pests like mealybugs and things like that. So this is a better spot for it. It's out in the open. I can see it and it's been doing pretty well. This has been a very low maintenance plant. I haven't had to do much with it at all. I really enjoy the multiple trunks and everything it has on it. But you can see, like, see there's some white here. You can kind of see. No? No? All right. It'll only unfocus that spot. There's some signs that I need to do a spray and a treatment on this. This time of year is when I kind of start to do that with pretty much everything. It's time to start getting back into that routine and, uh, getting things basically ready to go inside for winter, which can't believe we're already there, but it's like a six week process of just making sure everybody's pruned and cleaned and sprayed. I'm using uh, horticultural oils and soaps and those sorts of things just to, you know, get them cleaned up and ready. I'll do that like once a week for the next few weeks to get them ready to go inside. That's really neither here nor there. I want to do a little bit more like beautification with this area here. Not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I need more color back there. It's just so dull. This area with the fountain should look nice. It should look pretty. I need to grab a sponge and clean the algae off the front of that pot too. So I'm going to have a look at the Monstera. I'm not sure if I can move that though. I would like to move that down here, but I just, I don't know if I can. Uh, yeah, basically I'm just gonna be shifting plants around trying to make this look nice again get it more cleaned up and tidied i came through and got all the like lower hanging leaves trimmed off of these calocasias here they're over there on the ground you can see them this <laughs> they're too big for these pots but it has opened things up nicely so i can see through them again and see the tea plants that are back there they're cordelin freticuses so th that's nice <laughs> looks ridiculous it's still nice and the thing is it's beautiful at nighttime that's the only reason I haven't pulled these out because I think this would be beautiful with just some simple impatience planted in the front but at nighttime these light up or they illuminate they reflect the lights so well because of this glossy foliage that just shines at night so instead of taking them out and trying to balance the planters out I just said Neh. It's fine. At least it's it's pretty for my favorite part of summer, which is usually nighttime. Things are nice and cool. I love nice summer nights. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, I was going to... That, that, eh, we'll bear it back. See what I can get done here. What are you so excited about? Why do you want to go inside so bad? He's like, keeps running to the door. He's like, let me in. It is a beautiful day. It's only like 78 degrees. And it's early, but still. You should be outside and enjoy yourself. An old man, he sleeps all day. He should be outside for a little while. Uh, down here is where I have that Monstera. This used to be an area that I used to do a lot of stuff with. This year, clearly not the case. But this is also where I have to leave the Monstera until the angle of the sun shifts in the late summer. It's doing great over here. I mean, it's doing wonderfully. The new foliage that's coming out of it, this is a very, very big leaf. I don't know. Oh, well, you'll be able to see that, but it is quite large. The only problem here is it's been doing so well that it has rooted itself down all over the place. There are roots shooting down the sides of the pot that go down into the ground and they're running over here underneath this drainage dish. So I'm going to have to peel 
this out from the spot. I'm debating if I want to do that. I would like to have this down on the other end. I don't come down here that often, especially this time of year. There's just mosquitoes everywhere. So it would be nice to have this over in the sitting area of the patio. But uh, again, it's like, I guess I'm going, it'd probably be better to handle that now than give it another like six to eight weeks to adhere itself even more, right? Yes? No? Maybe? I think I'm just going to see what I can do here as far as getting it sort of peeled out. You can see those roots, they just wrap around and under things. Oh my goodness, found some ants. Wow, not too shocked there. Now, I don't know if this root is, no, that is that is like cemented down. I think I could slowly peel that up. There we go, cemented down, that's a bit extreme. Is this nail driving anyone else crazy? It's driving me crazy. My sister was over here a few days ago we were socially distanced, but it was nice to hang out and I, I had fun with her nail polish. And it, yeah, that doesn't come off. It, like, it's not, I thought you could take this stuff off with rubbing alcohol. You actually have to use nail polish remover, so good to know. So that's going to be there for a while because I don't have any nail polish remover, but I'll try and remember to grab some next time I'm somewhere that has it. This root, this root is way, way, way down there that is buried very far. I think I can save the other roots. This one, I don't know. I'm gonna try it with two hands though, just to be safe. I managed to get all of the roots excavated except for one. One of them broke off below the soil. Aerial roots, it has tons and tons and tons of them, so I'm not that concerned about that. It seems to be doing fine in spite of that. I mean, look at all those roots down there. That's all, that's what this thing does. The monstera is, if you give them humidity, then there will just be aerial roots everywhere. I feel like pretty much every year when I move this plant inside, I end up like, hep, see these are all wrapped around there. In the winter time, that's what I do. I just wrap them up in there because they end up dangling and getting stepped on and stuff like that. They just, they're, like I said, they're all over the place. Not great to have laying on the ground and in the spaces where people are walking around, but out here, it's okay. Man, this thing's getting really big. I know, it's wonky, but it's fine. It's what they do, it's a vine. It's nothing unusual there. As soon as I hit record, he gets out of the pool. I would have just had like the most beautiful picture. Toby was laying right here, Tucker was in the steps. Beautiful, gigantic monstera in the corner. Then I grab the camera and they're gone. It's all right. I have a feeling he'll be back in the pool in like 10 minutes. He likes to swim. He's a, he's a swimmer. This plant is so much more impressive when it's out in the open and not shut back in a corner. I mean, look at it. This thing's gigantic. Right, Tobes? You came crawling through? I don't want Tucker to come crawling through. He'll dognado that thing right into the pool. Wouldn't shock me. Just because that's what Tuckers do. Oh, that was some nice variegation it got up here. Wish that it had carried that through a little bit more in some of its other foliage. This, what, Toby, are you trying to kill me? This isn't like one of the most brilliantly variegated Thai constellations, but it's mine and I love it. I don't care. I think it's pretty. Jeez, I just can't believe how big this thing has gotten. It did so much growing this year. It, that area down there is a spot that I, you know, I have drip over there and misters and uh, before all my surgeries, I put plants over there and I was like those are going to be okay they're in the shade some morning light but mostly shade and they weren't on my list of things that I was making a priority to focus on taking care of or that I had other people taking care of for me while I was recovering I had no clue it, I'm sure in the last clip too it, just, it didn't look this big you know now that I'm looking at it it might not even fit into that spot over there so I have to figure something else out here. I want to repot it. The pot I got for it disappeared. So I have my eyes peeled for a different pot to put this in. Mostly just needs to be repotted for a better state. Nothing new. Those are things I've talked about on plenty of occasions. Well, all right. I guess I'm going to go putter around and see where I want to put this. That's down here in the seating area where it will be viewed and appreciated some more. Because, I mean, that's just... It's too much to have tucked way back there in the corner. Oh, you pruning the petunias for me? You dog made went around those planters, getting things cleaned up? Oh, yep, yep, dry yourself off on the chairs. That's the way to do it. Good boy, Tucker. So, I'm not 
really sure what to do here. This is not going to fit back there the way that it used to. I can make it fit, but I just, it's not, uh, what, well, for starters, it's going to be a two person job because I don't want to break it. And also, I know myself well enough. If I go ahead and put this monster, if I take this and put it back there behind that fountain, then what's going to happen is I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to get around to repotting it. And then uh, fall's going to come around. I'm going to go, oh, I need to repot this Monstera. I can do it when I move it into the grow space. Then I'll get it into the grow space. I'll say there's not enough space in here because it is. It gets pretty packed in the garage during the winter time in my little bubble I make. And I'll say, oh, well, I'll have to wait till spring to get that done. Wish I'd done it last year. I know that that's what will happen because it's happened two years in a row. So I'm just, uh, I'm leaving it right here for right now. Not ideal. It doesn't look pretty. But if I put this away, it's not going to get done. Now, I don't have a car right now. It's still in the shop, and I have to wrap this video up. So next week, uh, my focus is going to be getting this repotted onto a new stake and, you know, doing all the things that need to be done to fix this beautiful plant up. Not ideal, but it's okay. I got a lot done this week. And by this week, I mean the last three days. I had to uh, film things differently this week because there's a big storm coming on the way excuse me why are you on my face the wind blew the umbrella right over my head yeah it's supposed to rain for like off and on maybe the next seven to ten days because there's you know the tropical storm marco and now hurricane laura coming up through texas up here where i live that's not going to be a big deal it's just going to be some wind and rain so everything here is going to be fine but it just won't be conducive to doing things outdoors so i had basically Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning to get all the stuff done. I did a little bit Saturday afternoon while Saturday's vlog was uploading, and then Sunday was my mother's birthday. So I was with family, far apart from each other, but we were doing family things basically all day. So uh, yeah, considering I only had a few days and it was really hot, so I was only mostly working in the morning, got a lot done, particularly over here. There were a lot of repottings, that's why things took so long otherwise it would just be rearranging plants and just rearranging plants that doesn't take too long but you know i repotted the heliconia i repotted some gingers i didn't talk about everything i did i repotted that akuba over there a whole bunch of begonias i still have another begonia in here i actually have three more begonias that i need to repot i went through one two three and then i already took two out so about four no five very large bags of potting soil busy few days but got a lot done and then after i re i have a few more plants to repot and then i'm going to just my entire potting area i'm just going to put everything away i'll put like just the key essentials over down there by that tiki bar and finally be done with all of this madness these are all things that would have been done in may or june but you know things happen and that's all right i am very happy with what's gotten done out here would have liked to have done a little bit more but that's okay and I went ahead and I ordered some uh, chunky pumice and some uh, lava chips so that I can make a proper mix for this to get that repotted. So that will hopefully be here next week so I can get that done. Then maybe I'll run to the nursery if they still have that queen palm. I know, you're probably like, why do you need more queen palms? I don't. It just, it has a beautiful growth habit to it. The one that they have, it's like a grade A and it's just, it's beautiful and the price is right and I just want it. And that's okay. Let me live my life and do what I want. It's fine. Leave me alone. And maybe by the time I can even get to the nursery when I have the car and everything, they may not even have it. I don't know. New? <laughs> I do new. I do need to do something with this Dracenia. I have a pot that I was going to put this in, but it needs another hole drilled into the bottom of it. These need excellent drainage, so I'm going to have to hold off on that. Not a big deal. Everything seems okay. Just a matter of doing some tidying now. It's kind of the fun and easy stuff to do. You don't want to focus on the iguana, that's fine. So thanks for hanging out for a lot of just the stuff. You were here, you know what was going on. Still a lot of stuff left to repot. I have this back here that needs to be repotted. My tetrasperma back there needs to be repotted. Thanks to Nikki. Plants, pots, and what's not. She was showing pictures. She got a beautiful one of these that like looks like it's going to be variegated. It has some variegation on it and it reminded me, oh my gosh, I need to repot mine. I went back and I dug mine out. Need to do some watering, yeah, and uh, need to film the garden tour, like, right now. So I'm going to water plants, film a garden tour, 
busy week, busy day, but that's okay. It's fun. We get to be outside. What's not to love about that? And I have one minute left on my memory card, so I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. We'll see what kind of stuff get up to out here next week. So, of course, as always, and most, I'm racing here. The, the, like the little things ticking down. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.